Hey guys, I hope you all are doing well. This is AG, watching Math to the Max, and today we will discuss solving exponential equations. Okay, let's check out some key vocabulary. Exponential form, this is your general form, A times B to the X. A is your initial value, B is your base. If the base is greater than one, we call it a growth function. If your base is less than one, we call it a decay function. Your prerequisites. So what are my prior knowledge, things I need to know? Know how to solve multi-step equations, particularly linear and quadratic. Knowing your negative exponent property, meaning you have a negative exponent, you just flip the base and change the exponent to a positive. So you could have 1 over 9 as that answer as well. Zero exponent. Anything to the zero power is numero uno, 1. And then your power property is when you have a exponent power, you bring it to the front of the leading coefficient. So what's the process? How do I solve an exponential equation? Well, check out these three cases. Case one is when you have the same base. You're going to cross out the bases. Set the exponents equal to each other, and then solve for the variable. All right, case two is when you have different bases that are able to be changed to the same base. So you're going to change it to the same base. Always break the bigger base down. You'll see an example. Then you go back to step, or the case one rather, which is cross out the bases, set the exponents equal to each other, and then solve for the variable. The case three is when the bases are not able to be broken down to the same base. You're going to take the log of both sides, bring the exponents to the front of the leading coefficient. That means you're applying the power property of logarithm, distribute if needed, solve for x. You already know what time it is. It's time to go to work. work, work, work. So number one, this is case one because we have the same basis. So what do we do? We cross out the basis, set the exponents equal to each other. Now go ahead and solve for x. Get all the x's on one side, then get all the numbers on the other side. So we moved our 2x to the left side, and we moved our positive 2 to the right side. Y'all do the inverse operation. We get negative x equals negative 7. You never want a negative variable, so just change the signs on both sides. We get x equals 7. Final answer. All right, number two, what case is this? This is case two because we can break eight and 16 down to a common or the same base, and that is base two. As you see, two to the third power is eight, two to the fourth power is 16. Now that we have our same bases, you always cross them out, and you set your exponents equal to each other. So now we have three times x minus one, four times x plus three, we do our distributive property, and you solve that linear equation. You get all your x's on one side, get all your numbers on the other side, and your final answer would be x equals negative 15. Number three. This is where we have different bases. All right, this is a little different. So you have to get the exponential by itself. It's being multiplied with a plus two. So in order to get rid of a positive two being multiplied, you divide. So now we have different bases that can't be broken down. You got to take the log on both sides. Then you have to apply your power property, bring your exponent to the front. And then you just get rid of the law of 5 being multiplied by dividing on both sides. And we put in our calculator, we get approximately 2.49. So that was an example of case 3. All right, so we must need the same basis. And we have the opportunity to change them because 25 and 125 can be broken down to base 5. So I'm applying my negative exponent power property which is 5 to the negative 2 is a fraction and then 5 to the third power is 125 so once you have the same basis cross them out and as you see we're doing, doing the distributive property and then that's the linear equation you gotta get all the x's on one side and then you solve that one step equation by divided by negative 8 and you simplify your fraction of course you can get a decimal if you like but we normally leave it as a fraction final answer 9 halves
right, number five, can we break four and 122 down to a same base? No. So we have to take the log on both sides. This is our case three. And then we're applying our power property, which bring your power to the front as leading coefficient. And then you have to do your distributive property. All right, now I need to get all the X's on one side. So I'm going to subtract my X log 122. And then I need to get all my numbers on the other side. So in order to get rid of subtract three log four, I need to add it. Okay, now I need to just solve for X. So I need to factor out an X because that's what they have in common on the left side. So you see our X has been factored out. And now in order to solve for that X, you need to just divide by the quantity in the parentheses. And you remember why we're doing that is because the opposite of multiplication is division. So in your calculator or your desk modes, you're going to put log 122 plus 3 log 4 divided by log 4 minus log 122. And you get approximately negative 2.62. Final answer. So pause the video and see if you can go back and see what we did each step and see if you can say, say the steps mentally. And now you know how to solve exponential equations. I hope this was helpful. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends this video on solving exponential equations. Until next time, always striving for excellence and reaching for success.